or if you are using MetaMask, which is a self-custodian wallet, you're actually usually dependent on the <clears throat> default RPC provider, which is Infura, which is a centralized service running um, nodes, running an Ethereum node and providing RPC data. So all the data you're getting from the Ethereum blockchain, you're getting because you trust uh, Infura to provide that. Other examples of providers are Etherscan or blockchain.com, but within a handful of one or two providers, effectively 90% of the market in terms of application and use uh, is represented amongst those providers. Now, what's the problem with this? The problem is we took a decentralized system and we've re-centralized it. And all of the problems with centralized systems come back between the network layer and the application layer. So we've we've re-centralized the system here, and if I have the centralization point, you know, why do I even have a decentralized system to begin with? And you can say, well, why do I care about it being uh, decentralized or not? In a centralized system, we have the issue of outages, we have the issues of censorship, and we also have uh, the issues of tracking. I actually remember being at ETH Denver a couple years back, and um, someone was trying to buy a hardware wallet, and I couldn't sell them a hardware wallet because. <clears throat> Um, and fear was down. So we were sitting there at a blockchain conference on a supposedly decentralized system trying to do a transaction, but because one centralized service provider uh, endpoint went down, nobody could actually use the blockchain. I, I think that also is manifest in some of the different designs. So if you look at the more centralized uh, stake-based uh, quote-unquote blockchains that exist today, you see a lot higher issues, outages, and downtime than you see uh, with something like Bitcoin. It is a truly decentralized system. So if, if you you know have that sort of critical element in the system to use it, regardless if it's in the network layer or above the network layer, uh, the, cent the, the system is effectively becoming centralized. So how can we kind of fix this? The way that we propose to fix it is if we can create a proof-based API we can effectively create a decentralized Infura. The idea here is that if I provide a proof with data, that does not require trust. And if we can make a system that doesn't require trust, consumers become agnostic to the provider. Right now, when people get data from Infura, the reason they're trusting that data is because Fura is attesting to that data. So they have a reputation, uh, they have an SSH key, and they're signing messages that are effectively saying Infura is saying this is what the data is on the Ethereum blockchain. And so you're just, just trusting that of Infura, but we can replace that signature and we can replace that reputation in Infura if we can just create a concise proof of proof of work that we can present to people with the data. And so proofs will allow the system to maintain decentralization all the way from the network layer through the application layer. And that's why they're interesting. So Nepo Pals, non-interactive proof of proof of work. So proof of proof of work was actually introduced by uh, Kias back in, I think it was 2016. <clears throat> and then the work was later refined to non-interactive proof of proof of works. And uh, interestingly, the third author on that paper, uh, Dinesis Zendros, is also a co-author on our security proof of Poem, uh, which we recently published at IA. IA CR. Um, I'll have a link to that at the end of the presentation, uh, but something interesting to look into. But basically what a proof of proof of work does is that we prove a transaction has taken place by showing work on top of that transaction in a concise way. That is effectively what we're talking about here. The implication of being able to do proof of proof of work is that with uh, somewhere between three and five kilobyte proofs for a generic API query, you no longer have to trust the response of the query because the proof will prove that response to me. And then what we can do with that is we can actually validate the proof within the SDK. So we don't have to worry about app providers needing to understand proof of proof of works if they use the Quas SDK, integrate proof validation into the SDK itself. They're just gonna make API queries. The SDK will effectively route those queries, validate the response to be correct, and then just provide the, the normal response to the API. Uh, the difference being that this can be done in a completely decentralized way. And what this means is that all nodes can become data providers. Um, so Nepo powers allow all nodes to become trustless data providers, and this also potentially creates a new uh, decentralized source of revenue for running a node.